Hello friends, this is the second series of the video which is Ganga Basin. This is the series of geographical videos which you are making and I hope you should have seen my first video associated with Ganga Basin which is part 1. In the first video of the series which I have made as Ganga Basin part 1, it covers from the origin of river Ganga and we have travelled along with this river Ganga up to a point which is called Allahabad. Now from here I am slightly going to take a small deviation and I am going to speak about the river which is called Yamuna. So the part 2 of this video we will see about river Yamuna and I am going to speak about the origin of river Yamuna and I am going to travel along with this river Yamuna and we will see important cities associated with river Yamuna and finally I am going to stop the part 2 of the video in a place where the Ganga and Yamuna have confluenced which I have just spoken in the previous video which is the Triveni Sangamam. This is uh, the Yamuna basin which we have just speaking and this river which I am marking in the red is the Ganga and that we have already spoken in the part 1 of our video and the part 2 of the video we are going to speak about the whole of Yamuna basin. So origin of Yamuna in the Himalayas and we are going to travel all the way down to Delhi, Agra and finally we are going to reach in a place which is Allahabad in the part 2 of the video. Let us see some salient features of river Yamuna. River Yamuna originates in a place which is called Yamunotri glacier and this river Yamuna joins Ganga in a place which is called Triveni Sangamam in Allahabad and it is the longest tributary of river Ganga which is 1376 km in length and also for information it is the longest river in India which does not directly flow into the sea. Let us see some of the tributaries of river Yamuna. The left bank tributaries of river Yamuna include Hindan, Sharda, Giri etc. And the right bank tributaries of river Yamuna include Chambal, Sindh, Betwa, Ken, Tans etc. For your better understanding I have given the image please pause the video and go through all these important tributaries of river Yamuna. Let us see the cities which are present on the banks of river Yamuna. The important cities on the banks of river Yamuna happens to be Delhi, Mathura, Agra and Allahabad. So one by one we will see the city. First we will start with Delhi. Delhi is the national capital territory of India which is otherwise called as NCT and it is an union territory. And you must know there are many satellite cities around Delhi. This happens to be Gurgaon, Noida and Faridabad. And in the current affairs latest I hope you should have seen that Delhi is the most polluted city in the world according to WHO report. And here you see India Gate is a war memorial and it is built for the soldiers who had sacrificed their lives in World War I. I hope you know Indian soldiers had also taken part in World War I and World War II. And this India Gate is built to represent the sacrifice of the Indian soldiers who had sacrificed their lives in World War I. Let us see some more points about Delhi. We will go into this Delhi Metro. This Delhi Metro is spearheaded by a person who is called E. Sridharan. And he is reason is referred as the metro man of India because of him only the Delhi metro had come in a rapid space and was completed in time. And he is also a recipient of Badma Vibhushan award from the government of India. Now we will see some historical aspects about Delhi. You must know Delhi comes into prominence during 736 AD because Delhi had been made as a capital or Delhi has been made as an important city during the rulers who ruled around Delhi they are called as Tomara rulers. And it is during those people only we have come to know a city which is called Delhi. And in the year 1206, I hope you know, a ruler who is called Qutbuddin Aibak who laid foundations of the Delhi Sultanate. And though Qutbuddin Aibak laid foundations of the Delhi Sultanate, he did not rule from Delhi. He ruled from a place which is called Lahur and he ruled additionally as also Delhi. And you must know the foundation are Delhi had been made as the capital of the Delhi Sultanate only during the time of Iltutmish who shifted the capital from Lahore to Delhi. So we will try to see some important UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Delhi. The first UNESCO World Heritage Site which we are going to speak is Redford Delhi. This Redford Delhi was built by Sajagan in 1639 and you must know it is built in red sandstone. This Redford had been attacked by Nadir Shah in the year 1739 during the time of later Mughals. 
Muhammad Shah Rangila happens to be the ruler when Nadir Shah attacked Delhi in 1739. And you must know during this attack and also subsequently during the revolt of 1857 which happened around Delhi and important marble structures which are present inside the Red Fort Delhi had been destroyed. And you must know in another important point. On the every Independence Day, the Prime Minister of India hoists the India Striker flag from Red Fort, Delhi. Let us see the other UNESCO World Heritage Site in Delhi, which is Kudup Minar. And this Kudup Minar is a minaret. And this Kudup Minar is a five-story building, which is approximately 73 meters in height. This Kudup Minar, the foundation for the Kudup Minar, and the beginning of the work of the Kudup Minar had been laid by Kudbuddin Aibak. He began the construction of Kudu Pinar and it was completed by his subsequent ruler who followed him whose name happens to be Iltutmish. And you must know the Kudu Pinar had been attacked by lightning during the time of Ferocia Tukluk who happens to be the ruler in the Tukluk dynasty and he repaired the monument and added the fifth story which means initially when Kudbuddin Aibak and Iltutmish built the Kudu Pinar happens to be only four stories. But after the lightning during the rule of Feroz Shah Tukluk, he added the fifth story to this Kudub Minar. And you must know, Sher Shah also added an entrance to this Kudub Minar. So, we will see some more aspects about this Kudub Minar complex. It is in this Kudub Minar complex, we have a mosque which is called Kwatul Islam Mosque. This Kwatul Islam Mosque is the first mosque to be built by the Delhi Sultanates. And in India, we have mosques built even before this Kwatul Islam Mosque. During the 7th, 8th century, we have the earliest mosque in India which has been built in Kerala. But this mosque, Kwatul Islam Mosque, is the first mosque built by the Turks in India during the time when they began their dynasty. And as you see, the first mosque, the Kwatul Islam Mosque, is made from the structures brought by the destruction of the Hindu temples. So you can see it does not look like a mosque, but this is the first mosque built by them. And also you see there is a building which I have given. This building is an incomplete building. This building is called Alai Minar. Alai Minar is a minaret built by Alauddin Kilji. Alauddin Kilji who came after slave dynasty and who came in this Kilji dynasty, he wanted to build a building twice the height of Kudup Minar. So he laid the foundation of this building which is called Alai Minar. But as fate would have, before he could complete the first story of this building, he died in the year 1216. Next, we will see about another UNESCO World Heritage Site in Delhi. And this is Humayun's tomb. This Humayun's tomb is commissioned by Haji Begum, the widow of Humayun. And this is the first garden tomb in the whole of Indian subcontinent. It is the first structure to use red sandstone at a very large scale. This Humayun's tomb in Delhi is a very important structure. You see, the last Mughal emperor, Bahadur Shah Jafar, took refuge here in the revolt of 1857. When he tried to escape from the Britishers, he was taking refuge here in this Humayun's tomb. And also please know that based on the Humayun's tomb only, Taj Mughal had been designed and built. The Humayun's tomb and Taj Mughal have many similarities. And the only difference between Humayun's tomb and Taj Mughal is that the Taj Mughal has got minarets and Humayun's tomb does not have minarets. And the second striking difference happens to be the Humayun's tomb may have a white marble dome and the building is built in red sandstone. Whereas in Taj Mughal, the whole of the structure is built in white marble. That is the two important structures. Despite of these differences, we have many similarities which are existing between Taj Mughal and Humayun's tomb. We will see some other important monuments in Delhi, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court represents an Indo-British style of architecture. It was built in the year 1954 during the time of the President Rajendra Prashad. A very important sculpture in front of the Supreme Court is the mother and child sculpture. This mother and child sculpture portrays mother India protecting and sheltering young Republic of India. So young Republic of India is being protected by mother India. The other important building is the Sansad Bhavan or the Parliament House. The Parliament House has got both Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha. And you must know it is designed by Edwin Lutins. And this building had been designed in the year 1927. And you must know the Constitution Assembly had been drafted here inside this Parliament. The other important building in India is the Rashtrapati Bhavan. This Rashtrapati Bhavan is built during 1930s. This was built to be the house for the viceroys or the official residence of the viceroys. 
This building had been designed by Edwin Lutyens and after the British had left India, Rashtrapati Bhavan happens to be the official residence of the President of India. Next we will see Raj Ghat which is located in Delhi. Raj Ghat is the place where father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi had been cremated after his death in 1948 and this Raj Ghat is located on the bank of river Yamuna. The other important structures in Delhi include Lotus Temple and Jantar Mantar. Jantar Mantar is an astronomical observatory and there is a long series of Jantar Mantars which has been laid by Raja Jay Singh. I will speak more about Jantar Mantar in the subsequent slides. So, we will discuss more about Jantar Mantars and other functionalities associated with it later. Next, we will see other important monument which is called Jamma Masjid. This Jamma Masjid is a mosque. This Jamma Masjid is built by Emperor Shah Jagan between 1644 and 1656 and it is the biggest mosque in the whole of India. At one sitting 35,000 people can pray in this Jamma Masjid. And this Jamma Masjid is built using red sandstone and white marble. And the dome of Jamma Masjid which is also represented in Taj Mahal is a very important dome. This dome is an developed form of dome. This dome is a bulbous dome. Next we will see about an important city which is called Matra. This Matra is believed to be the birthplace of Lord Krishna. Otherwise, it is called as Sri Krishna Janma Bhumi. And you must know Mathura had been ruled by a kingdom which is called Kingdom of Surasena, ruled by a person who is called Khansa, who happens to be the maternal uncle of Krishna. And it is a very important city which has been a pilgrimage and religious city associated with Hinduism. And another important thing about Mathura is uh, Mathura Milk Peta, which had given as an image. It is a very important sweet which is associated with Mathura. And also you must know Mathura forms an important junction or a trading point in ancient India and this trading point had been found in the Carbon route which is connecting between Bengal and Indus region. Mathura is also known for an important school of architecture which is called Mathura school of architecture. I hope you should have known that in ancient India three important schools of architecture existed. One is Mathura, next is Gandhara, third is Amravati and these three schools of architecture, Mathura school of architecture is the earliest of the schools of architecture and Mathura school of architecture is very unique because it not only is associated with Buddhism, Jainism and Hinduism, it is also associated with secular objects. So, Mathura school of architecture made images of Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism and secular images. As I have ported here, the secular image which is standing here is an headless statue of Kanishka who was a Kusana ruler. Next we will go to the city which is called Agra. Agra city was founded during the time of Shikandar Lodi and Shikandar Lodi made this as a capital in 1506. And you must know in the present day, Agra city forms an important city in the Golden Triangle Tourist Circuit. This Golden Triangle Tourist Circuit includes Delhi, Jaipur and Agra. This is the Golden Triangle Tourist Circuit in which Agra is a very important point. And also you must know Agra is home to a very important newspaper which is called Dainik Jargon. This Dainik Jargon is the largest selling newspaper in India. And we have another important structure in Agra which is the Agra Forge. For information this Agra Red Fort is built by Akbar. And you must know Akbar built a series of red forts in India and one fort is located in Agra. I will speak about more forts when I am speaking about Allahabad. So, Akbar built this Agra fort. And you must know Shah Jagan had been imprisoned in this Agra fort by Aurangzeb. And until his death in 1666, Shah Jagan was imprisoned in this fort from 1658. And you must know another important historical point associated with Agra fort is that Chhatrapati Shivaji visited this Agra fort in the year 1665-66 and because of some incident he had been imprisoned in this fort and later on how he escaped from this fort is a big historical story which we have no time to discuss now but please refer this story how he escaped from the Agra fort and finally went outside Agra. Next we will see about Taj Mughal. Taj Mughal is a mausoleum, is a grand tomb is called a mausoleum. So, Taj Mughal is a mausoleum. Taj Mughal is built by Shah Jagan in memory of his wife Mumtaj Mahal. And the chief architect of Taj Mughal happens to be Ustad Ahmad Lahori who 
who happens to be the chief architect and Taj Mughal represents the zenith of Mughal architecture. You see, I'll speak about the salient features of Taj Mughal in the next slide. But just you see, this is the double dome which is existing. This is the bulbous dome which is existing, and these are the minarets which are existing in the four corners of this building. And the building had been placed in an elevated platform, which is a feature of every Mughal architecture. And other aspect of the Mughal architecture is that the building is placed in in the midst of a garden. The other aspect of this Mughal architecture is there is always a fountain which is present uh, in a grand building. So these are some of the aspects of the Mughal architecture, and Taj Mughal is the zenith of the Mughal architecture, as I have said, because it has got all the things which are present. The other features of the Taj Mughal include something which is called Pitri Dura. Pitri Dura is a design technique. Pitri Dura is a technique where color stones are embedded on the walls of Taj Mughal. So, if we have a closer image of Taj Mughal, we can see colored stones are embedded on the white marble of Taj Mughal. Double dome I have spoken, fountains I have spoken, gardens, minarets, and you must know Taj Mughal represents a mix of Indian and Persian architecture. Next, other important building in Agra, which is located just near Agra, around seven eight kilometers near Agra, is Fatehpur Sikri. Fatehpur Sikri is a new capital built by Akbar. The meaning of Fatehpur happens to be victory place. Are a place which is built after a victory. Akbar laid the foundations of this Fatehpur Sikri after his victory over Gujarat, and in the year 1572 he began to build this building. And it is built in the place where a very important saint, who happens to be Salim Chisti, resided. So Salim Chisti, an important saint, resided on the mount, a small mount, which is Fatehpur Sikri. Akbar built his new capital in this Fatehpur Sikri. And the important buildings in this Fatehpur Sikri happens to be Buland Darwaja. Buland Darwaja is an entrance door to Fatehpur Sikri, which is located here. It is one of the grandest and the biggest entrances in India, which is located, which is Buland Darwaja. And of course, we have another monuments inside, which is Jama Masjid, Tomb of Salim Chisti, Hibadat Kana. I hope you should have heard the name Hibadat Kana. Hibadat Kana is the discussion chamber where Akbar used to discuss about the doubts associated with different religion. You should have studied that in. In history, and also we have something which is called Panch Mahal, a five-storied building built inside this Fatehpur Sikri. Next, we'll see the GA tag associated with Agra. Agra Duri is a rug which has got a GA tag. It is a traditionally hand-woven textile product. You must know it is a rich variety, and it has got designs, colors. I have given an image of this Agra Duri, and it has got a GA tag. We have come to the end of part two. Of this Ganga Basin. In this part two, we have covered whole of the Yamuna River. In the part one, we have completed Ganga River, starting from its origin to Allahabad. In the part three videos, we are planning to start again the whole Ganges from Allahabad and subsequently. I hope you all know this is the four-part series of River Ganga and its basin, and we have come to the end of the second part. For information, we have already made a video associated with Kaveri. Please watch this video. We also made videos associated with history, current affairs, and all other aspects required for the preliminary examination. Please go through all these videos. Subscribe our channel for more videos. Keep in touch for the forthcoming videos. Thank you.